Okay, so let me do something kind of proper here. Let me reintroduce myself. My name is Max Maxwell, and I'm a real estate investor and a serial entrepreneur. Some of you know me, a lot of you don't. And the reason why I want to do this is because I kind of want to apologize to my subscribers that have been there since day one. There's been an absence of making videos and putting out content. And the reason why is because over the last two months, I've moved. I moved to Dubai kind of like in silence. Some people know, and it started out as a small journey, but now I'm here. But that's not really why I wanted to do the reintroduction. I just want to tell you that I moved with my video team. We've got our stuff coming, the studio stuff, everything else. But here's the thing. I'm going to continue to make new content. The content is kind of shifting just a little bit. Yes, I will still be doing real estate here in the UAE, in Dubai, for sure. But I'm also going to be talking a lot more about entrepreneurship in general. There's some awesome people that I've met here in this region that you've never heard of. Some cool companies, some small companies, some big companies, and just over overall some amazing entrepreneurs and people that I'm going to be sharing with you over the time that me and my wife get adjusted here to living in the UAE in Dubai. So this is going to be like a new chapter in our journey of the Max Maxwell journey, because as I grow, my audience grows and you guys get to grow with me. And you remember me starting in 2015, 2016, back in my mom's house. And now my wife and I have just moved to Dubai. So I do want to apologize for the lack of content, but no, I do have your back and we are going to be making more and more content and probably even better content than we've ever made before. So stick around and let's start getting to the story of why we moved to Dubai. All right, so a lot of people have asked me kind of privately, people that I've known that I've told, hey, look, we've officially moved. It started out as a two month, let's go check it out. And I knew in my head while I was here in the two months, I needed to set up my businesses. Now, before I dive into how to set up businesses and stuff like that, I'm just going to tell you kind of our story. So we came here for our honeymoon in January of 2022. And when I came to this region, I was blown away by the advancement of infrastructure, the people, the business, just the whole technology, the way it was driven, the way that this region is kind of growing. And that brings me to my point number one. We wanted to be in a region that was growing, not that a region was kind of looking at its past, something that we want to be a part of in the future. Because if you're thinking long term, and I've always been taught, if you're planning something out, plan out for 100 years. Yeah, I may not be here for 100 years. I get that but you should make plans as if you are in the sense of like business and you know, like, like future because you're planning out for the future. So we wanted to move to a region that was growing and we felt like the Middle East, the UAE, particularly Dubai is growing and kind of the entire UAE. And this, not only this, but this region. And so you have Egypt who is, who is growing fast and yeah, every country is going through its problems, but you see the cycles. And another reason is, May and I plan to have kids one day. We hope to have kids, inshallah, we hope to be able to have kids. And we wanted to be in a region where the education standards was much higher than it is when we were back home in the United States. I mean, the facts are just the facts. So safety is also another reason. There's virtually zero crime over here. And kind of, if you've been following me on Instagram, I talked about since we've got here in March, last two months there's been 102 mass shootings in the united states there's been zero here in dubai and i know if you're a family person with your mother your father whatever it is you also have a big concern for your safety but not only your safety if you have kids the safety of your kids and you want them to be well educated you also want them to be able to go places that you don't have to sh chaperone and supervise all the time because of the safety so safety is a big one Coming to a region where we can grow as entrepreneurs and people are was a big choice in that. So that's kind of the main reasons why we said, hey, look, let's pick our things up. Let's move 7,000 plus miles and let's go. Now, a lot of you have been asking, what about the horses? Well, a while ago, we sold the horses because they were becoming a little bit older and they were becoming trail horses. I like working horses where we can go out and do more than just trail riding. So everything kind of lined up and we were supposed to go get buy new horses in the summer. But obviously this bright idea came up to, hey, look, let's explore different regions. Let's explore different things. Another reason why we wanted to move is because of taxes. I mean, the UAE has zero personal income tax. Now, what does that mean? If you make one hundred and ten thousand dollars, your paycheck reflects one hundred and ten thousand dollars. There's no taxes that come out of that. 
And I think we've just been subjective to this type of invasion of money from the government that we've kind of just got used to it and we don't question it at all and we just say, hey, it's a normal. Well, there's other places in the world that don't have it and the UAE is one of them. They just, you, you, you keep more of your hard earned money. For myself, is businesses. Now, right now they have zero business tax. They are looking to go forward to a 9% business tax, but it's a very straight forward type of tax law. It's not complicated. The book can't fill up this entire room. It's a very straightforward process. Look, 9%, if you make over this type of income, you're gonna pay 9% in taxes. And so even with that coming on the horizon, it's still a better option for somebody who makes a lot more money, somebody who wants to keep more of their money. And listen, even if you may, even if you, if you look at professionals like doctors, dentists, or lawyers, or engineers, or anybody that has a skill, if you come here and you're making 50, 60, 70, $80,000, you get to actually keep that income. And so that's why it's important. That was one of the important things for us to say, listen, let's build a future somewhere that's one growing safety, cool kids, the whole nine. And then also taxes is a big one. And frankly, there's more millionaires leaving America now more than ever before. And it's not only millionaires, there's a huge population of actually Americans here in Dubai. I believe it's around three or 400,000 in the UAE total, but a lot of people are moving here. But more importantly, there's other expats from like Europe and other places who have come here and said, this is going to be our new home. And we're just one of them. So that's kind of our story. So also my wife and I are Muslim. And so this was the first time we, when we decided to come here and to check out Dubai for two years, we wanted to see what it was like being here during Ramadan, which is the holy month for Muslims, where you fast from sun up to sundown. And not only you partake in all the prayers, every, every mandatory prayer, but also other prayers. And it was just a great experience. The food here, the quality here is amazing. You have more of a community for myself. It's a Muslim country. There's also Christians here. There's other people here. So people from all walks of life live in Dubai. It is truly a melting pot of, of people. But being here during Ramadan was an amazing experience for myself and my wife. I got to meet new people who helped me on my journey. The whole nine, it's just been an overall good experience. And there's mosques everywhere. If you miss a prayer, it's because you wanted to. <laughs> that was also cool. I also got to go to Mecca, Saudi Arabia. And just, that's another thing. Being in this region, I'm six hours, seven hour trip from China. I am around the corner from Europe. I can be in Pakistan. I can all these other places where me as an entrepreneur, where I do business from, where I source products from, where I have manufacturing facilities at, it just makes more sense to be able to jump on a plane and move to these places very quickly. Okay, so let's talk about some of the myths that you may have in your head or you've heard before when it comes to particularly moving to Dubai. One is that you have to be rich. That is not the case. There's a lot of people here that make fifty, sixty thousand $60,000 on their regular job that live a comfortable life. One, I'll tell you thing that I was actually kind of surprising for me and Tony, uh, my, my cre uh, video creator, was that groceries were actually more affordable here and more readily available than back in the States. That was kind of an interesting, I, I just, simple thing. I thought that groceries would be more expensive, but it's actually cheaper than it is in the States. A lot of the food here is halal, meaning that it's, it's grown and, and sacrificed in a particular way that is standards to the Muslim faith. Kind of like uh, the Jewish faith where they have food that is prepared a certain way. It's the same thing here, but a lot of the food, and that just lends to the restaurant quality. There's a lot of Michelin star restaurants here. There's so many restaurants. I mean, literally you can eat out every single night, every single meal if you wanted to and never go to the same restaurant twice. I wouldn't advise it because then you can really spend a lot of money. But you know, you don't need to be a millionaire to live here. That's definitely a myth. There's affordable cars. And I know all you guys see is the, the Lamborghinis, the Ferraris, all these things. So they have those things. They have those things because one, people get to keep more of their money. That's the number one reason why they don't have the taxes. You're not spending 20, 30, 40% of your earned income come on taxes so you get to spend more of it into things that you enjoy you don't definitely you definitely don't need to be a millionaire to move here you don't need to be making tens or hundreds of th like hundreds of thousands of dollars to move here it's a very work oriented place where you just you can live a simple life or you can live a very extreme
stranded life. I've been to people who they make $70,000 a year, awesome house. I've been to people who are billionaires, great house. There's everything in between. And so that's what I really kind of bust that myth in your head. Another thing that is real cool, America has a huge homeless problem. They don't have that here. They're, because if you're here and you don't have money, you're working. And even if the worst case scenario, your employer will provide housing for you. So uh, that's also a good thing to see. And uh, I don't know, it's just different to, to, to see it. Especially if you live in a place like New York, San Francisco, LA, you see a lot of homelessness. There's absolutely zero here. What are some other myths that people kind of think about? Another myth about Dubai and the UAE in particular is that people are saying, people think, or you, I hear this, that there's no culture here. That is absolutely false. There's a very rich culture and a melting pot, but they have their original culture here, even though Dubai itself and is like 50 years old, there's a large, large culture here with coming to foods, traditions, the way they do things. When you come to a place like this, you should get immersed into their culture. So you kind of understand the way that the people operate here and why they do certain things a certain way. And it's an amazing culture. So there's definitely culture here. It's not just all rich, rich, rich. No, that's not it. People here are amazing. And another thing is that everybody's super nice. I'll tell you a quick story. I'm from the South, road rage is a thing. Uh, when my wife when my wife moved from New York into North Carolina, I said, listen, don't go around beeping your horn like you're in New York. So one time I was in a taxi, this guy cut us off twice, and I was like, oh, I'm about to see my first incident. Taxi driver pulls up to the, the guy next to him at the stoplight. They wind down their window, and this is the most you see. He said, listen, look in your mirror before you change lanes. I thought it was about to be an argument. And the guy says, you know what? You're right. And he rolled his window back up. <laughs> And so I think it's actually against the law to give somebody a middle finger here in, in a road rage or something like that. So there's just a lot of things that are built into common sense here that will you kind of debunk. Another thing is that, oh, the dress code is extremely strict. No, I do partake in traditional clothes only because it's very relaxing to have on, which is a Kadora. But oh no, I walk in the mall, I see people from all walks of life that have clothes on that you would see all over the place. Now, here's one thing, you're not gonna wear your bikini walking in the mall. It's just, it's just not respectful. It's not respectful to the people that are indigenous to here, and it's also not respectful to yourself. So no, you can't do that. There is people that will, I don't know who they're called, but they will come to you and say, listen, put on an overgarment or something like that. But no, it's not strict. You can wear shorts, you can wear whatever you want. Just don't run down the street naked. And that won't make any sense. And I think that's illegal anywhere in the world. Another myth that people think is alcohol is completely banned. Not true. There's nightclubs here, there's restaurants here, there's Michelin star restaurants. They all serve alcohol. The people like myself who are Muslim, the people are from here that don't partake in it, just don't partake in it. There is a Emirate Sharjah that is completely alcohol free, which is not too far from here. But Dubai in itself, no, it's 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 normal. I wouldn't drink and drive. Not recommended. Not even a thing. Too many taxis around here. You'd be that'd be on purpose if you did that. So, but overall, there's a lot of myths that people think. And here's another one: people think that you must learn Arabic to come here. Everybody speaks English in some form of it, whether it's broken or not. The number one English, I mean, the number one language in the entire world anyways is English. You're gonna be perfectly fine navigating through here if you know how to speak English. And one of the dumbest thing is, is you don't have any rights. I know if you've grown up in America, we're the number one in the world, blah, 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 blah. Listen, you need to travel because that's simply not the case. You have rights. You have rights just like you have anywhere else, but you just can't do the dumb stuff. Stuff. And you know what I mean? You're not walking around in front of the a, a building with the AK-47. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. There's just some common sense laws in here that just make sense that I think a lot of people agree upon. And so everybody, you have rights and people here are very polite. So that's kind of the myths that just don't make sense. And people just need to come here and experience them. And I'm telling you, as somebody that has been here a few times and then moved here, so take my word for it. All right, so let's talk about starting your business or moving your business to Dubai or the UAE. Well, that was my intentions from the beginning. One was moving one of the businesses we currently have and creating several other businesses while we're here. Now, the process is not as straightforward as it is in America. I think in North Carolina, you uh, pay 125 bucks, you get an LLC, and you can kind of just do whatever you want to do in the activities that you've kind of designated your business to be in. It's not that simple here. I'll be straight up forward with you and honest in the beginning. It takes about three weeks, maybe even a month, depending on 
what was going on we set up our business during ramadan time so we finished like right before so people were kind of taking vacations and stuff like that i'll kind of explain from my perspective and then i'll break into kind of the steps that you need to be able to do so for us, we, we had to pick an industry that we wanted to be in and a trade name. And so trade names are pretty strict here. So you can't just name your something completely different and do something else. They usually have to have what you're doing in the name some sort of way. So we, we did that. We picked our activities and you pay per activities in the industry. And certain industries have restrictions and inspections after you get the business set up. But overall, I had somebody walk me through the process. We picked the name, the trade name. We picked the industries that we wanted to be in. And then you have to get what they call an Ajari. Ajari is a system where every rental contract in the entire UAE, I, I believe it's the UAE, but I know particularly for sure, 100% it's in Dubai, is registered. So all the rental contracts are there. And once you have that rental contract, that gives you the legitimacy of coming here and creating a real business. Once you have that rental contract and you have your approval from the industry, your trade license, then you have an official business. And what happens is and you own that business 100%. And then as a foreigner, you can come in and employ yourself under that business and give yourself your own visa. So you sponsor yourself. Now the cost to set up a business can range. And I would say anywhere between six and probably $12,000. And you're probably like, oh my God, $12,000. Yeah, it can cost that much to set up a business. But let me explain to you why I'm okay with that. The reason why I was okay with that, because at the back end, when I make the profits, they don't want any. And so, yes, the process may be expensive. Like now, if you're doing a simple activity like a marketing company or something like that, probably six, seven grand, you're going to be out the door. We were doing something a little bit more complex that was in a couple different industries, a couple different permits. It was around ten to twelve thousand dollars. But when we make our profit, the government is not a silent partner in my business, meaning that they're not they don't want 40 percent of my earnings or 30 percent of my earnings. And so I'm OK with spending that money up front. Now, that may prohibit some people to moving here and just starting a business. Yes, I understand, because saving, you know, six to twelve thousand dollars up to start the business can be expensive when it's relatively cheap in America. But you have to pay more on the back end. You get what I'm saying. You're going to pay in the front. You're going to pay in the back. I'd rather pay in the front knowing exactly how much it costs versus in the back. It depends on, you know, them being like a business partner. My experience was actually pretty smooth. I'll be honest. I was a little bit frustrated with some of the nuances only because I've set it up so many times in America and things were just different. Then I had to realize and tell myself, yo, Max, relax. You're not in America. You have to do it this way. And once I kind of like, oh, because it should be simple, it turned out to just be a little bit extra step that you didn't that I was not used to taking. And I had to tell myself, listen, calm down. You're going to get it. And so we got it. I got my Emirates ID. I got my visa. I got everything. We sponsor ourselves, and we can go open up bank accounts, the whole nine. It doesn't take long. Now, one thing I will tell you, if you're an American and you're setting up a bank account anywhere in the world, they have this act called Obama passed it. It's like foreign bank account reporting act. I think it's called FARCA or something like that. If you open up a bank account anywhere in the world, and you belong to United States, you have to report that bank account back, which takes a little bit longer. Some banks really don't want to deal with you because of the headache, but it's more paperwork, but you'll eventually get it done. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can't come over here and like hide your money. America's going to know how much money you have. There are some rules that if you make, I think under $114,000, you don't have to pay taxes back to America. Now, I'm not 100% sure on that, but I'm about 95% sure that there's some paperwork you have to fill out. But no matter how long you're here, every year you're here as an American citizen, you must file a tax return, whether you owe money or not. It's just the way it is. That's why a lot of people are leaving America and renouncing their citizenship because they're just tired of that extra paperwork stuff. But anyways, coming to Dubai, setting up a business, finding a home, all of those things do require some time and some patience and some guidance but it's very manageable. Me and my wife were able to do all of this in less than two months while Ramadan was going on the whole nine. So it's really not that difficult. I do have some step-by-step -step process of kind of how to open a business. In this video, I kind of wanted to share the story, give you an update of what's going on with my life, my personal life, why we've been in Dubai for so long and kind of what's going on. Now, you know, my wife and I have moved to Dubai. We set up businesses in Dubai. I will be doing real estate in Dubai. So stay tuned on what exactly I'm doing. I can't reveal it yet, but there's so much plus side to what we're doing we still have our ranch back in america i don't know what i'm going to do with it yet coming here i believe for us was an amazing decision and i hope that if you're on the fence 
of making that decision. I hope this video has helped you be able to at least come out here and explore for a little while so you can see if it's a bet fit for you or you and your family. Now, what I will be doing in the next video is going into very detailed matter of how you're supposed to set up your business in Dubai, what it took, the paperwork, the whole nine, and maybe some of my own recommendations on the companies that you should be using to be able to set up your business and how you can get a visa and a residency card in a different country so you can kind of be a world citizen. So I hope this video has helped. Thank you guys for sticking around and watching this one. You know what to do. If you're not already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, please like and share with a friend. I greatly appreciate you guys and keep looking forward to me being on this red couch talking about what it's like, the move, the business, the whole nine, and some other content that's gonna be coming very soon. I appreciate every single one of you and I'll see you soon. Peace.